Uh, I was actually born in, in Chicago. Uh, my folks were immigrants. Uh, they came from uh, what at that time was Russia, now the Ukraine. Uh, the only place they could emigrate to to get away from the terrible situation they were in in, in Russia was uh, Canada. My folks were business people. They were entrepreneurs, and that's where I really learned about what entrepreneurism really is. Learning has been the essence of my life for my entire life, so I became an electrical engineer. I got a job at an outfit called Teletype Corporation, which was a part of AT&T. It was a wonderful mechanical gadget, but was soon to be obsolete. At that time, I was recruited by Motorola. I ended up spending 29 years at Motorola in the two-way radio business. I started out in research at Motorola and moved into the product area, uh, ultimately uh, got to be the very first product manager uh, in the two-way radio division. The most successful business at Motorola was the two-way radio business. Somebody at Motorola decided that paging was a step forward. It was the first time you could have truly personal communications. We were just learning how to make stuff uh, electronics in a miniaturized uh, form. Motorola developed a pager that worked in a building. We did an experimental system at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, and they didn't work very well. Motorola went to the Mount Sinai Hospital and told, look, at, let us take the system back, and then we'll come back to you with a much better system. And they wouldn't let us do that. Because even in the form that the system was in, it was better than having nothing. And so the next thing we had to do was take our two-way radios and put them on a person. Dick Tracy had a wrist two-way radio, and my mission was portable products, and my dream was to have a wrist radio like Dick Tracy had. I accidentally started the rumor that the cell phone uh, came out of uh, my experience with Star Trek, and that, of course, is totally untrue. There was a, a movie made called uh, How William Shatner Changed the World. Well, William Shatner didn't change the world. Uh, we engineers changed the world by creating all these products. The, the very first nationwide pager uh, didn't happen until the uh, early 1970s. It grew from there to become a uh, huge industry with uh, 50 million subscribers in the U.S. I started a new division called the Systems Division that ended up being the, the focus of cellular business at Motorola. Uh, and that was a really crucial part of uh, my career. Uh, Bob Galvin was our uh, chairman. Uh, Bob Galvin uh, bet the company on whether a cellular was going to be a success. We took this model to the development engineers uh, and they'd work very hard. If you could imagine taking everything that was in that 30 pound box and squeeze it into this little cell phone. Well, this phone grew and it ended up being about 10 inches high and weighed two pounds. And the battery life, incidentally, was only 25 minutes of, of talking. We demonstrated the first cell phone uh, on April 3rd of 1973. The phone was actually built in the first three months of 1973. When I had the idea for having a phone was uh, in November of 1972. Uh, the, the engineering team took it on at the beginning of the year and they performed a miracle. We called it the Dynatech for dynamic adaptive total area coverage. So here we are in New York about to announce the very first handheld telephone uh, and I'm gonna be on TV. Our PR person calls me and says, we got, you got bumped from the TV program. But I have found a radio reporter who wants to interview you and, and have the cell phone publicized on radio. But let's do that out on the street so they can get the feel for the freedom. So there we are walking in front of New York Hilton. I hadn't even thought about it before. And it occurred to me, you know, I'm gonna call Joel. And I said, uh, Joel, it's Marty Cooper. It turns out that uh, uh, Joel was very polite. We had a nice conversation. 
Over the next 10 years, we built four iterations of the cell phone, each one getting smaller and smaller, all with the same configuration. Uh, my team called it the shoe phone. For the first commercial service was in 1983. By 2000, the uh, car phones pretty much disappeared. There is gonna be a lot of change. So we're already thinking about cell phones that will embrace uh, artificial intelligence. We have to figure out how to get the cost out so that every student can have wireless internet access. We have to solve the privacy and security issues. The emphasis of getting the cost out and, and uh, providing coverage everywhere. 40% of our students either can't afford it or don't have coverage. That's unacceptable. So we have a lot of problems to solve. But one thing you know is that technology is going to solve those problems.